So this might be the most hidden feature for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. Now, what we're doing is capturing the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II in 4K30 with S-Log applied, meaning that we got to have to color grade our footage, right? But not now using OBS. And what I'm talking about is that the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II is shooting again in 4K30, it's shooting in S-Log3, and what is happening is I'm running an HDMI cord out of the HDMI port into a HDMI to USB capture card and bringing it into OBS and OBS the resolution is set to 4k 30 and OBS is capturing the footage as 4k 30 but what we have done is use a previous method that I mentioned in a previous video I have it linked in the description on how to do it but you can upload your own custom LUTs to your SD card and you can apply them through the camera for certain uh, footages like HLG3 or S-Log or Cinetone, whatever it may be. And you can apply the LUTs through the camera and you can have it displayed through the actual display on the camera to see how your footage would look like if you were to color grade. But because you're doing that, whatever is on your display through HDMI is going to be ported to your HDMI capture card or to your monitor or wherever you're using for that external display. The caveat with this is because the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II allows you to have that clean HDMI signal so that you don't have any information to being displayed on that HDMI out. Now your footage is color graded. Let's talk about it. Okay, so as you can see right here, I have some LUTs that I usually use for my Sony ZV-E10 and my Sony ZV-1, um, Mark 1s of both cameras. And you can see I usually bring my cameras in with, through a capture card and then I apply some LUTs wherever that I have from Paul Lehman. Again, you can check out my previous video on tips of the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II and you can check out, you know, these LUTs that I talked about. But as you can see, the S-Log footage, when I turn it on, obviously it's messing up because again, the camera, this is just a brighting LUT or wherever to brighten up the image but as you can see sitting here turning these on or wherever does mess with the footage and honestly i'm not the best at shooting in s-log3 this is my first time dealing with s-log3 and stuff so obviously the colors might not be good i could probably change some settings inside the camera or wherever because i do notice like a more magenta red uh tones to my skin and stuff like that so there's some things that i could obviously um you know change up or whatever but what i wanted to show you guys is that when i go over to my actual youtube studio desk my actual uh camera that i use over there is actually color graded and what i mean by that is if i go over here and show you guys right here there is a LUT applied for HLG3. And obviously when I shoot on the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II on the other you know, YouTube studio desk or wherever, I have those LUTs applied. And when I take it off, you can see how washed out and decolored or wherever and desaturated and everything the camera looks just by being over there. So now we're at the YouTube studio desk. I'm using this XLR microphone, the Fine Fine K688, and I'm running a super long XLR cable to go into the Wave XLR from Elgato. And that's how I keep my microphone microphones EQ to the way I like and if I need to use the fine fine AM8 like I was using earlier to record a video or live stream or talk in discord or whatever I just unplug the long XLR cable and plug in the one that's in the back of the AM8 back into the wave XLR and that's how I get perfectly EQ'd audio to my liking and when I was over there using a stream camera was the Sony Alpha 6100 and since you can't color create uh, grade this footage or wherever all I did was just use it raw or wherever, and I used a Yongnu 16 millimeter lens on it. It's a F1.8 lens. And the lowest it's been on Amazon is like $238. I got it for $288. I'll have it linked in the Amazon store page down in the description to all the accessories for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II that I covered in a previous video. I'll have those videos at the end of the video as well as in the description. So definitely check them out if you're looking for tips and help with your Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. And again, I used to use this as my stream camera. I use this for photo taking wherever for my thumbnails, for my videos. But like I said, with this setup over here for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I with the 16 millimeter lens on it from Sigma, what I usually have to do is go into 
OBS and this is with it without filters. And what I've done is go into OBS and apply my LUTs that I have purchased from Paul Lehman. Again, I'll have his website linked in the description, no affiliation or anything, but they're the cheapest like conversion LUTs or whatever for your cameras. And what I've done is use his HLG3, I would say LUT and the filters applied in OBS. And like I said, when I turn them on, this is the way it looks. So I don't have to do that extra step as far as going into the filters of OBS on the properties of whatever HDMI source I'm bringing in and add them or anything like that with the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. I can completely skip that step, have microphones already EQ'd depending on wherever I'm using the camera at for my setup, as well as shooting in S-Log3, HLG3, whatever it may be. And like I said, I could change up the saturation and gamma and all that stuff. And again, I'm new to S-Log3, so I'm not sure what I'm really doing yet. I might go back to HLG3 just to keep, you know, the cameras kind of similar depending on how I'm gonna use the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. But like I said, having the ease of use of just having the LUTs apply through the camera and coming out of that HDMI signal, because whatever you're doing on the display is going to be, you know, going through the HDMI signal. And since it's clean HDMI, your LUTs are already applied in camera. And if you're wondering again, how to, you know, apply those SD card of uh, the LUTs to the SD card, I have talked about it in a previous video. I'll have again, linked in the description. But I think this is like just a hidden feature, especially if you're getting budget items and stuff like that. Like you can get a USB capture card like this one. This one costs like nine bucks and it's a USB uh, capture card for HDMI signal. And it does do only 1080p 60 frames per second. So if that's okay with you, you can do it that way. Or you can upgrade to the Cam Link 4K from Elgato, even though that one's a little bit more expensive, but you can find refurbished models pretty easily. But again, even at that 4k footage or wherever it's still going to be applied and it's going to go straight into obs as long as you you know you're setting your resolution for 4k 30 or 4k 60 or wherever you're shooting at even 1080p 60 in obs it's going to capture your footage and like i said the let's already going to be applied just like it is for this setup and i've worked meticulously to get this setup to look the way i wanted it to look with the sony zv e10 mark one so again i could do that with the sony zv e10 mark ii I just have to, you know, work on it or whatever, but you can see the thought process and how to do this. And again, you never have to color grade your footage again, unless you go outside and you're shooting in a different profile other than like intelligent auto. And again, if you're just sitting at your desk and your, your camera's on a, a tripod and you don't mind running a super long HDMI cord to a capture card device or wherever into your laptop or your PC, and you're gonna be in the same room anyways, and you wanna use this, this you know audio footage and you don't want to color grade in DaVinci Resolve or maybe you're using an editing program like Wondershare for more where you can't actually color grade your footage you can have it already applied and have your microphones already applied with EQ and really just simplify your workflow to pump out the content that you desire with that being said if this information was helpful to you or you need some kind of more explanation don't forget to check out those videos I referenced if it did help you out though don't forget to like if you're new to the channel and you want to see more Sony ZV-E10 Mark II videos from me in the future, then consider subscribing. And if you want to help me out even further, check out the Amazon store page down in the description to the Amazon storefront that I have set up for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II accessories and everything I use for it. And uh, those affiliate links obviously help me out. And if you want to take it even further, you can consider joining the channel's memberships and that will help me out significantly. With that being said, y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours and deuces everybody i really hope that this helps somebody out